Hello and welcome to the DSP Project, your weekly fix of music production and technology. I'm your host Rupert Brown and this week we're answering a question from Craig Weinstein. Hopefully I haven't butchered your name too much, sorry Craig. He comes from Australia and he asks, how can he get some LED feedback for the effects that he has mapped to a row of buttons on his launch pad controller? Now I do have a solution for you that we're going to go through today, but to be honest, it is a little bit janky. It's not a, it's not a perfect solution. So if anybody out there has a better way or can add something to this, then please let us know in the comments section. Um, but this is how I figured out how to do it. Okay, I have one audio channel here with a single loop and a single flanger effect device loaded in. I've got a, a MIDI track here which is just set up to give us our LED feedback. And if you've got any questions on that, go back and see my LED feedback video which will explain what that channel is doing, but that has very little to do with our example today. So how Craig likes to have his uh, effects set up is basically using four pads for one effect, one pad to control the on and off, and then uh, map a range for these for three pads uh, to control the wet and dry, which basically gives us him a kind of a, a light, medium and heavy level of effect. So first of all, I'm going to go ahead and map that as he has it. So select mini map. I want the on and off to be that one there. And then for the wet dry, I want a range between this pad and this pad. Um, and you can see if I pop this out, pop our mini mapping out, uh, you can see here we've now got a, uh, a Oh, we don't have a range. That's a lie. Let's try it again. Select wet dry from this one to this one. Okay, there we go. We've got a, a range here between those two notes. And uh, I want the minimum value to be, let's say, 40% and the max value to be, say, 80%. Um, so now if I take my MIDI mapping off, if I play my sample, come back to user one mode, I can uh, set between... Uh, medium, sorry, low, medium, and high level of flange. I'll turn it off. Okay, so that's, that's all good and well, but as you can see, we do have LED feedback for on and off, but we've got no idea where we are um, as far as the, the wet-dry is concerned without looking at the screen. So, to get around this, to get some feedback, what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to push Command Shift T to add tracks. I'm going to add nine tracks. Now, the reason why I'm adding nine is just to get this MIDI track outside of this red box here. The reason for that being, uh, if I start loading, come, jump back to session view, if I start putting clips in here, um, they start taking up precious real estate and I should explain um, to get this feedback we're going to use dummy clips so these don't actually need to be seen by the launch pad because we're going to we're going to hard map to launch them so that's why I've created them and the, so we're going to come over to this ninth MIDI channel here jump back into user one mode I'm going to double click to insert a blank MIDI clip and I want to find out what the the note values are for these these three pads here so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom out and arm this track and zoom out and uh, you'll notice I'm not seeing, not seeing anything when I, when I hit these buttons. The reason for that is because these are now hard mapped to that wet dry control so they're not uh, giving us sort of a normal CC note input. Uh, whereas these guys still are. You can see these little red, these little red lines popping up. Uh, but luckily I know that the next note in the sequence is going to be this one because as you'll know in user one mode it sort of goes from low to high like this, up these four and then sort of four pads up to here. So, oh, sorry, I'm all over the place. Here we go. So back to user one mode. Um, so the point being that if I hit this guy here, you can see it lighting out red. I'm going to click hold, drag to the right to zoom in and I can find that is that's the note above. So I'm fairly confident then if the if I move this to the next note down if I hit play on that one there we go we get our uh, our pad lining up so I'm going to drop this down too which should give us this guy here okay so you can probably see where we're going with this so far so good but there is a there is one little hitch one little problem that uh, happens with this technique what I'm going to do now is I'm going to MIDI MIDI map and select this top bar here I want this to be this clip to be hard mapped to that one, that one to that one, 
and that one to that one. Now just by mapping those, we start to see a, a strange behavior. When I push play on this clip, it starts, uh, starts off all fine, but you'll see it turns a dull red. So we've got this, this, uh, this red clip and it's kind of a really bizarre thing the way this behaves. You sort of get one, we get one bar of a light color and then it turns, uh, eventually will turn to a, to a dark red. Uh, what's, it, what's even weirder is you can reset it even just by highlighting it up and down. I'm just using arrow keys to go up and down. As for why this is doing this, to be honest, I've got no freaking idea. Um, we are kind of pushing the launch pad past how it's designed to be used at the moment and because it uh, communica communicates with live um, just via standard MIDI um, you're going to start seeing some you know you see some odd things when you start like I say doing some stuff which is kind of outside how it's meant to be used but fear not there is um, there is a there is a way around it so what we're going to do is uh, I'm actually going to make this a really small clip I'm going to drag this right down um, drag the, this right down here. So what happens when I push play now is we get a bright flash and then it goes straight to the straight to the dull red. So at least it's uh, it's kind of consistent. It's not flicking around. I'm now going to duplicate this three times and I'm going to move this one up one and this one up two, which should now give us a uh, red but you'll notice that it's highlighting up and it's sort of taking a while to change that's because the quantization for this project is set at one bar so I've highlighted all three clips and I'm going to select L to drop to pull out our launch options and I change the quantization from global to none oh that's eight bars <laughs> to none that's what we're shooting for so now as soon as I hit the pad you'll see I get a bright light but then it turns red straight away so we've got I've got LED feedback for on and off I can set the the amount to high go back to my session mode jump back again and it's still set to high so if we're using the clip turn it on back into session mode, do something else, jump back into user one mode and I can instantly see that the effect is on and I'm using a, a small amount of the effect. And there you have it, that's how you get LED feedback. Um, as I said uh, in the introduction, this is a little bit of a janky funny way of doing it. It's not perfect, it would be cool if we could change the uh, the, the color of this, this faded red but I it, I've had trouble trying to get it to go, but this is at least a uh, solution to your problem, Craig. I hope that helps. So that's how I achieved it. As I said, it's not the most perfect solution and uh, maybe somebody out there has a better way of doing it. If you do, please head down to the dspproject.com, leave a message in the comments underneath this video and uh, show us how you would solve this problem. Uh, while you're there, if you want to subscribe, that also helps us out big time as well. And if you want to get a hold of me direct, you can send an email to inbox at the dspproject.com. That's all for this week and I'll see you next week. You always play with the turtles, does it help? <laughs>